We're just a touch away. Monday to Friday at 12.30 p.m. Only on Bloomberg Quint. Good morning. You're watching All You Need to Know on Bloomberg Quint Live and I'm Alex Matthew. First, the headlines. Asian markets are set to end the week with losses. Investors now shift focus to the upcoming U.S. jobs data and the latest round of corporate earnings. India's finance ministry has highlighted a slowdown in the economy led by a slowdown in private consumption and a tepid increase in fixed investment. Standard Life Aberdeen's Mauritius Arm plans to sell another 1.78% stake in HDFC Life Insurance via an offer for sale. Hindustan Unilever may see a drop in volumes for the first time in six quarters. However, the company's profitability is likely to remain intact. And flights to and from Odisha's capital city of Bhubaneswar and also Kolkata have been cancelled as Cyclone Foni makes landfall later this afternoon. Our thoughts and prayers go out to everyone in Odisha and all those who have family there. We'll continue to bring you updates over the course of the day. Let's turn now to the U.S. markets. They ended Thursday's session on a weak note after Fed Chair Jerome Powell failed to indicate that the central bank's next policy move will be a rate cut. Traders, in fact, who were pricing in a 65% chance of a cut before the policy have slashed their forecast and now see a probability of below 50% after Powell's comments. The fall in oil prices also weighed on stocks. Renita Young of Bloomberg News tells you what happened in that session in this report. U.S. stocks are lower on Thursday as the S&P 500 drifts further away from that record high level it hit not too long ago. And the Federal Reserve kept rates the same, signaling patience yet again. And this all happens as American productivity gain accelerates just before the next monthly jobs report, which will be on Friday. Now, we're still in the middle of corporate earnings season. The latest oil giant, Royal Dutch Shell, beating analyst estimates. Caterpillar boosting its dividend to a record, which really underwhelmed investors and dragged the Dow Jones Industrial Average down a little bit more. But Under Armour's first quarter earnings per share beat the highest analyst estimate. Shares are soaring on that news. Fitbit second quarter adjusted loss per share V was wider than initially estimated. And meanwhile, Tesla shares jumping after filing to raise about $2 billion through offerings of debt and common stock. And Beyond Meat's IPO raises $241 million as the appetite for more vegetarian dishes grows and shares are soaring. Now in economics, we see oil slumping and the U.S. dollar higher versus major currency competitors helping to boost the Bloomberg dollar index. U.S.-China trade negotiations, however, are back on the table as meetings resume in Washington next week, hoping to ink a deal very soon sometime in May. And Treasury yields are jumping just as traders bet the Fed will keep rates on hold for a little bit longer than expected before cutting rates. And also in Fed news, U.S. President Donald Trump's Fed board pick Stephen Moore resigns or withdraws himself rather from consideration as productivity gain in the United States accelerated by more than expected this past quarter, the fastest pace since 2014. Now, the very next signal on the health of the U.S. economy will be in Friday's jobs report. And that's a look at your Thursday Wall Street action in New York. I'm Renita Young for Bloomberg News. All right, so that jobs data is going to be a major cue that comes out later this evening. For now, let's turn to the Asian markets, which have opened on a weak note. Rosalind Chin is joining us from the Bloomberg studios in Hong Kong. Uh, good morning, Rosalind. Uh, well, in lower volumes, or we, sh slower volumes today because of the markets that are shut. But what can you tell us about the markets that are open right now? Indeed, yes. Uh, uh, the markets are pretty much uh, pulling lower, uh, the ones which are open, which means the KOSPI, the Hang Seng, the Straight Times Index, and also uh, the uh, S&P SX200, the main markets, are all trading lower today. The uh, MSCI Asia Pacific Index down by about a fifth of 1% in the absence of, as you mentioned, China and Japan, which are closed for the uh, holidays. Now, of course, non-farm payrolls are going to be the key focus today. Many investors are probably sitting on the sidelines waiting for those numbers to come out. Uh, of course, we do see that 
that uh, the, the Fed comments uh, about uh, low inflation being a transitory issue does mean that uh, wage growth is a key number to be watching this month and, of course, could have knock-on effects for Asia region. Now, we do have the KOSPI um, that is down by about 0.8% right now. Uh, Hong Kong, which opened just a few moments ago, down by about half of 1%. HSBC is going to be reporting its earnings in a few hours from now. HSBC, the third uh, most heavily weighted component of the uh, um, HSI index. And uh, right now, HSBC is losing about half of 1% ahead of those earnings. Australia's ASX um, 200 losing just a little under a tenth of 1%. Now, this hasn't been a great week for Aussie stocks. Uh, they have actually put in their worst performance pretty much uh, since February. But overall, as the, the year to date, they've actually made gains of about uh, more than 12%. Now, today's um, performance not helped by Macquarie Group, which uh, uh, did say that uh, profit will drop slightly this year. So that affecting today's um, performance in, in Australia. But overall, the Aussie stocks have been on a tear this year. And in fact, um, it's at, this Aussie stocks have been soaring to levels not seen since before. Uh, the global financial crisis at uh, the highest in a decade right now but there are some which are saying well they are going to be a um, possibility that is looking a little bit toppy including Richard Coppelson at Bell Potter Security saying the broader market is seeing is toppy and overdue for a decent sell-off and he sees that beginning in early to mid-May which is around now so let's take a look at this week's performance and see how that will um, go, go forward in, into the coming weeks in May seeing whether you know his uh, forecast is true or not it does look low that options traders are uh, ramping up their bets on the RBA which is meeting next week uh, easing and the possibility of course easing monetary policy has in the last few weeks helped uh, those Aussie stocks um, make further gains so uh, let's take a look at whether the downward trend is going to continue into the rest of May in Australia back to you thanks so much for that Roslyn well let's talk about uh, oil now it has been in focus in in the recent sessions it has been sliding and they have continued their slide overnight and fell to a one-month low this just after uh, or a day after the U.S. waivers on imports from Iran came to an end. NYMEX crude fell almost 3% overnight as U.S. crude stockpiles rose to their highest level in two years. James Thornhill of Bloomberg News brings you this update. U.S. crude, crude stockpiles had risen to their highest in two years, and that's done, done quite a bit to offset uh, supply concerns that had been besetting the market and driven such a strong rally earlier in the year, which was obviously driven by the, those OPEC plus production cuts that were agreed at the end of last year. Um, so if that trend continues, then certainly there might be scope for, for this pullback to continue. The next data point to look out for will be the, um, the U.S. oil rig count, which comes out on Friday. Now, that has been uh, going up slightly uh, in recent weeks, and if that continues to rise, we, you know, could be could be scope for an, for another uh, leg lower. Um, the other thing, as you mentioned, um, is the U.S. oil sanctions on, on Iran. Uh, and the waivers were, were removed, and people thought that might be a, a positive influence on prices and it so far hasn't proved to be huge and I guess, I guess the, the expectation in the market is that that uh, shortfall will be offset um, by Saudi Arabia most most likely and so it's not having a huge impact but we, it remains to be seen how strictly the US will impose the, uh, those sanctions again and, and we'll see how that plays out. Yeah there's quite a few uh, known unknowns if you like in geopolitics and, and the weather as well so what are some of the catalysts that you're keeping an eye on? Sure well you mentioned the weather um, we've obviously got this huge cyclone that's threatening off the coast of India and there are some oil and gas facilities offshore there so that will be uh, something that uh, the traders will, will no doubt be looking at um, as I said um, you know there's the end of those Iran sanctions is another focus um, on the longer term horizon the big factor looming over this market is the June as the expected meeting in June with the OPEC plus nations on whether they will extend those production cuts that's a huge question for the for the market clearly and we had some data overnight which showed that Russia was uh, was perhaps sliding a little bit on its commitment to those cuts so you know there there's 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 been question marks over whether Russia will con want to continue with the cuts or at least along the same levels of what they are going at the moment. So, you know, it's a, it's a big unknown, as you say, in the market. All right. Well, you just heard all the factors that are affecting crude prices with regard to the equity markets. The focus is now shifting to the trade talks between the U.S. and China. Expectation is that, uh, well, just a day after the U.S. government spoke about progress made in the negotiations, reports in the Chinese media suggested that the talks may have hit an impasse. The next round of talks are set to take place in Washington next week. Derek Wallbank of Bloomberg News brings you this update. Well, the word from the Chinese state media is that there is a question 
let's say, a question of whether or not this is hidden impasse. Not saying it's hidden impasse. They're they're noting that some people are suggesting there might be trouble in paradise, which is a really interesting way to frame all of this discussion. Uh, just shortly after uh, uh, the U.S. side was saying that talks were going positively. Now, look, there has been no uh, change in the talks between uh, yesterday and today. So this is not coming off of an actual development. This is sort of a sentiment question. Uh, but uh, but I would juxtapose this with, with some other reporting that has been coming out of the U.S. side. Uh, Politico earlier this morning said that they're nearing a deal, the U.S. and Chinese sides are, uh, to possibly roll back some of the tariffs, uh, particularly uh, 10% on some $200 billion in goods. Uh, and, and then further comments uh, from President Trump actually saying that there was a good possibility uh, for a deal to be made. So, yes, there is a little bit of injected uh, questioning uh, coming in from one of the sides, but it's also very possible that this could be a little bit of, of, of uh, gamesmanship, a little bit of both sideship uh, as we're coming down to a critical section between the U.S. and Chinese talks. All right. Well, we've looked at all the factors that are likely to uh, uh, have a bearing on the international markets. Let's turn now to the Indian markets. Uh, Agam Vakil is here to set you up for the day's trade and also to tell you what's happening in the futures and options space. Morning, Agam. How are we likely to end the week? Uh, well, possibly a sideways movement uh, on expected lines, Alex. And as far as today's concern as well, what we're seeing is a little bit of weakness as far as the S6 Nifty is concerned. But let's move on and talk about how markets fared yesterday. And again, a very little movement, as you can see, of uh, uh, small cap index absolutely flat. A little bit of an underperformance coming in from the mid-cap index. Uh, again, uh, largely unchanged for the Nifty PSU and the banking indices. But uh, what about stocks which are in uh, America? And uh, at this point, HGFC, Vedanta, and Dr. Reddy's ADRs advancing to a certain extent, but not uh, seeing too much traction. Otherwise, perhaps we're probably looking at a knock up around 1.3 percent. But when it comes to our own markets for now, FI is plowing in stocks worth uh, 597 odd crores. On the other hand, DI is selling stock worth 790 odd crores. Moving on to your contributors, Infosys, ICICI Bank, and TCS bearing down on the indices against the HTFC Twins and Reliance Industries. Well, giving some support to the index. But coming down to uh, futures and options, and that is where, uh, well, things are starting to move in. A lot of uh, long positions are starting to unwind as far as the Nifty is concerned, considering a 2.7% drop in its open interest. And the Bank Nifty uh, is also seeing a decline of as nearly 5% in OI. Uh, moving on to your, uh, well, <coughs> range that we're looking for in the upcoming week around, again, it's essentially the 11,800 call which is seeing the most amount of open interest. Moving on to change in OI, uh, well, there you have it. Again, uh, not too much traction except for the 11,700, 11,800 calls and puts. But we saw a further rise of the India WIX uh, up another 5.3% at around 23. And the Nifty put call ratio, well, it came off even further to around 1.38 against 1.48. Moving on to stocks, we do have jet airways in the FNO band. This is largely unexpected lines considering uh, so much writing coming through and such a surge in open interest. Uh, but moving on, we also have the likes of Apollo Hospitals, Ajanta Pharma, Jet Airways, GVS Motor Company, all seeing a surge in OI. And in unwinding, we have Canada Bank, Kotak Mandra Bank, and Ramco Cement. So we watch out for these as we move into trade today, Alex. Thanks so much for that, Agam. Well, let's uh, look at what's making headlines across the globe. Sue Keenan of Bloomberg News brings you the first word headlines. The Fed picks, another of President Trump's picks for the Fed, has bailed just hours after telling Bloomberg that he was, quote, all in on the process. We're talking about Stephen Moore. He was pulled out amid growing objections among Senate Republicans. His withdrawal comes days after the president's other Fed choice. The former pizza boss, Herman Cain, also dropped out. Now, Moore had earlier told Bloomberg that his biggest ally was the White House, and that he was feeling confident. Again, he is out of the consideration. OPEC, meanwhile, is being warned it faces collapse due to the treatment of some of its members. Iranian news agency Shana says the country's 
oil minister told the OPEC leader that the organization would not survive if some members continue to be threatened. Oil prices have had a volatile past week, this after the U.S. vowed to tighten sanctions on Iran in a bid to curb its exports. And Hong Kong grew less than expected in the first quarter as the weak global economy and the ongoing trade war dampened sentiment. GDP expanded by five-tenths of one percent through March, and that compares with a year earlier, with analysts looking for growth of almost two percent. Hong Kong is seen as slowing further this year amid continuing trade tensions and weaker property prices in the city. Global News, 24 hours a day on air and at TikTok on Twitter, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Sue Keen and this is Bloomberg. All right. Uh, well, a big update came in yesterday with regard to the economy. The finance ministry has acknowledged a moderation in growth in the last financial year. The government chose to call it a slight moderation in growth in the monthly economic report for March, which was published last evening. Nikunj Ori is joining us on the phone line. Nikunj has gone through all of the details of that report. Good morning, Nikunj. What are the reasons that were cited for that uh, lower growth or slower growth? Uh, the finance ministry has flagged slowdown in economy in FY19 due to declining growth in private consumption, tepid increase in fixed investments, and muted exports. The drop in private consumption in January March reflected in the slowdown in two-wheeler sales, which was in line with a broader decline in the GDP growth. But this is according to finance ministry's monthly economic report for the month of March, which was released in May. Remember, the second advance estimate released by the government had projected India's GDP to grow at 7% in FY19. Uh, besides this, the appreciation in real exchange, real effective exchange rate in Jan March could also pose challenges for the revival of exports, according to this report. Uh, besides this, there's a good news for uh, the government as well that the CAD, the current account deficit, may lower in may lower as compared to October-December. Remember, in October-December, CAD was 2.5% uh, of the GDP, which was lower as compared to the previous quarter. Over to you. Thanks so much for that, Nikunj. Well, if you missed any of the details of what Nikunj was just talking about, he's also done a story. It's available on the website bloombergquint.com for your perusal. Well, let's turn to the big earnings today. Hindustan Unilever could face a drop in volume for the first time in six quarters. But the bottom line is expected to witness growth in any case. Agam Vakil is here to tell you all about the earnings expectations. Agam, what are the headline numbers to start with? Well, Alex, uh, just a little bit of a correction there. We're not expecting a drop in volumes, but we are certainly are expecting volumes to come in single digit for the first time in six quarters. Uh, well, in terms of, uh, you know, in mid-quarter, we did know that HUL did suggest that, uh, well, they are expecting a slowdown in the entire industry as a whole. And uh, what we're seeing is essentially, well, revenues see a rise of around 10%. We're expecting margins to also expand by as much as 100 basis points and net profit seen up by as much as 19 percent at around 1611 crores. Now, as you already mentioned, uh, we are expecting, uh, you know, the single digit volumes growth uh, for the first time in, uh, in, in, in six quarters. And uh, this is supposed to be expected to be somewhere between six to eight and a half percent. Also, uh, a lot of brokerages uh, have uh, moderated their outlook, not just for HUR, but for the entire industry, and you know, on which we have already written a comprehensive uh, couple of stories. Uh, there has been a de deferral of the summer as well as elongated winter which has impacted volumes and uh, growth has hence uh, also taken a little bit of a hit. However, uh, you know, in continuation of the kind of trends that we've seen in the previous few quarters, rural growth again continues to remain higher in comparison to urban growth and of course uh, there is, we see a little bit of an uptick in commodity costs but uh, there is, hasn't been as much and as far as food commodities specifically are concerned, uh, they've been benign. So uh, these are some of those factors, along with the fact that the company has taken various cost-saving initiatives, which have worked out in its favor over the previous three or four quarters. That should play out in its favor, and hence we're expecting that 100 basis points improvement. On the whole, it should be a stable quarter, despite the fact that there should be there could be some slackness when it comes to volumes. All right. Thanks so much for that, Agam.
Well, that's one of the stocks that you have to watch out for on trade today. But Mishika Parak is joining us uh, to tell you all about the stocks in news. Mishika, what are the stocks on your list today? Good morning. Good morning. So we're going to first look at all the important results that have come out. The first one is Larson and Tubro Infotech, which came in with a weak set of numbers. The revenues are up 0.5% at 2,486 crores. The dollar revenue growth is 2% at 354 million dollars. Net profit is up 0.9% at 375, uh, 379 crore rupees. EBITDA is down 7% at 437 crores, and margins stand at 17.6% 7, compared to 19% last year. Then we have have Blue Star, which came in with results that were above estimates. Their revenues were up 18.5% at 1596 crores. Net profit is up 2.5 times at 80 crore rupees. EBITDA is up 81% uh, at 109 crore rupees. And the margins are at 6.9% compared to 4.5% last year. There was a deferred tax and mat credit reversal of 15 crores in the current quarter. Then we have Tata Power, which came in with inline numbers. Their revenues are up 0.2% at 7,230 crore rupees. Net profit is down 96% at 58 crore rupees. The EBITDA is down 1.5% at 1,349 crores. And margins are at 18.7% compared to 19% last year. There was other income of 186.7 crores in the current quarter. Also, there was an exceptional gain in the base quarter worth 1,886 7 crore rupees due to reversal of impairment of the Mundra plant. Tata Motors April auto sales have gone down 20% for domestic, commercial and passenger vehicles at uh, 42,577 units uh, because of weak consumer sentiment. Uh, exports are down 53% at 1,402 units. And Hero Motor Corp April auto sales have also gone down by 17% at 5,74,366 units. Then we have HDFC Life Insurance. The promoter Standard Life is uh, to sell up to 3.6 crore shares, which is 1.78% stake in the open market. The floor price is set to be three rupees 3.90 per share. And the seller proposes to sell these shares on 3rd of May for non-retail investors and 6th of May for retail investors. The floor price is at a discount of 7% to current market price. Lastly, we have Yes Bank, RBI approved extension of tenure of Brahm Dutt as part-time chairman uh, of the bank till 10th of January 2022. All right, thanks so much for that, Mishika. Well, you know, if you've had a smartphone this past year and you went onto Google and searched for your activity, you'd find out exactly where you went on the map over the last year and if you're trying to get off the grid getting your information off the internet especially on Google can be a little tricky but now there's apparently a solution Google has enabled a feature that will allow users to delete their data after a 3 or 18 month period take a look <laughs> All right, well, there's clearly lots to talk about over the course of the day. You'll find all the live market updates on Bloomberg Quint Live, and there are also a few other stories that you should consider reading on the website BloombergQuint.com. Here they are. The National Company Law Appellate Tribunal has allowed banks to declare the accounts of INFS and its subsidiaries that have defaulted on payments as non-performing assets, lifting an embargo it had put on banks in February. However, the Appellate Tribunal has clarified that banks cannot initiate recovery process and de debit money. Remember, INFS group companies with a collective debt of over 90,000 crore rupees are going through a resolution process. We spoke about this at the start of the program. As many as 223 trains al along the Odisha coastline uh, in the Kolkata-Chennai route have been cancelled in view of the Category 4 Cyclone Fonny. 
The cyclone is likely to make landfall today. According to a PTI report, Railways has also pressed into service three special trains to ferry passengers. The extremely severe cyclonic storm is likely to affect Odisha, Andhra Pradesh and West Bengal. And the uh, winds at landfall expect to be as high as 200 kilometers an hour. Well, that's all you need to know going into trade today. Do stay tuned, like I said, to Bloomberg Quint for all the updates on the markets and everything else that you need to know. Thanks so much for watching.